Hello and welcome to Chabot News for April 27th. I'm Angelina Treo and in today's news, a giant chicken bucket falls off a KFC restaurant in LA. Mario will talk about Prince's recent tragic death and Victor will bring us the latest updates on Steph Curry's knee injury. All that and more on Chabot College News. Two people were hospitalized Monday afternoon after police said there was a double shooting in Orange Park in South San Francisco. The police officials have recently identified a person of interest in connection to the shooting. 19-year-old Christian Omar Cruz was said to have been responsible for this crime, who reportedly had an argument with the two victims and fired three times. Cruz was last seen in possession of a handgun and was fleeing on foot westbound through the park. He was said to be wearing a blue windbreaker with yellow stripes on its sleeves. He is described as a Hispanic male, 5 foot and 7 inches tall, and about 150 pounds. Police officials are considering him dangerous and armed, and if anyone happens to encounter this man, please call 911 immediately. With the latest around the Chabot College campus, here's Carla Tovar with a report. On March 23, 2016, the new Veteran Center hosted their annual Women's Veteran event at Chabot College. The new Veteran Center is now located on the second floor of 2300 near the Student Life student life's office. This event was hosted by staff and students at the Veteran Center. They wanted to pay respects to women who have served their time in the military. The national anthem sung by students kicked off the event. The president of Chabot College, Dr. Susan Spurley, said a few words about the new center and she acknowledged the people who put the center together. Lorena Sosa talked about her experience in the military and gave facts about women in the military because it was Women History Month. In her speech, Sosa states, you must never forget the sacrifices and difficult conditions our veterans still endure. Alicia Sainer introduced the first honoree, Dr. Jeanette Jackson. Dr. Jackson has 30 years of experience in the community college system and the U.S. Army services. During Dr. Jackson's speech, she shared her experience in the military and personal life. I decided to take a different route and join the military after seeing the television ad that said, it's not a job, it's an adventure. I joined the Air Force and then joined the Army, stated Dr. Jackson. After Dr. Jackson gave her speech, she received the first honorary award from SOSA. Each honoree received a certificate, an American flag scarf, and a special shirt that the workers at the Veterans Center were wearing. The second honoree was Lieutenant Doral Gonzalez, who served in Iraq and Afghanistan as a registered nurse practitioner. Gonzalez helped veterans at Chabot College by providing information about health care. Lastly, Felicia Tisdale served active duty for seven years in the Air Force. She is the first African-American sergeant to supervise an all-male crew. And Tisdale comes into the center to help veterans find employment as well as helping them polish their job resumes. As the presentation was coming to an end, each former soldier in total, there were only five, received a rose. But overall, the presentation was well put together. The opening of the new Veteran Center has not been announced yet. Back to you, Angelina. Thanks, Carla. An Australian sheepdog who has been living for 30 years has finally passed away. Her name was Maggie the Kelpie, and she was believed to have been the oldest living dog in the world prior to her death. In human years, she lived for a total of 210 years. Her master confirmed the news to the Weekly Times last week and said that Maggie died peacefully while curled up on her bed. According to her, own, her owner, Brian McLaren, she was 30 years old. She was still going along nicely last week. She was walking from the dairy to the office and growling at the cats and all that sort of thing. I'm sad, but I'm pleased she went the way she went. Now, with the latest news around the Hayward community, here is Flo with a live report. Thanks, Angelina. We're live here at this Applebee's restaurant located at Southland Mall here in Hayward. A small bit of chaos broke down last Monday, April 18th, when two women refused to pay for the table's food after their friends ditched them. When the woman tried to leave without paying, three waitresses, a waiter, uh, the manager, and even the bartender all went after them. Uh, after a 20-minute argument and a physical confrontation between the manager and one of the women, the two customers decided to dine and dash and immediately flee the premises. While leaving, uh, one of the two women said, and I quote, I'm the baddest female dog in the bay. Police arrived to the scene 15 minutes later, but no word was given whether or not the woman got caught. Five of our news crew members, including myself, 
were actually in the middle of the scene last week, and according to our cameraman, Philip Antwine, the crime scene was indubitably crazy. Well, this is Flo, Flo Chella reporting for Chabot TV. Back to you, Angelina. Thanks, Flo. That was some fascinating news. Mission Peak Park Rangers are on the lookout for a young Hispanic male by the age of 20 to 22 who's 5 feet and 9 inches tall. According to the Rangers, the male was last seen Friday night taking a leak at the park once again. Also, he was last seen wearing shades with the wooden, wooden sides and a blue Hollister hoodie. If you see this man watering your hiking trail, call the park rangers as soon as possible. There's a reward money for the man who's le like water according to the local hikers and park rangers. To keep your eyes out, speaking of Mission Peak, here's our very own Carlos Mendoza with a report. Carlos Mex Mendoza right here at Mission Peak bringing you a live report for KCTH. Um, since it's March 30th to August 30th, we have an extra hour to hike this, this mountain, you know, or peak, whatever you want to call it. I'm here with a fellow traveler right here for the first time to come to Mission Peak, Victor. How's it going, Victor? Great. How are you doing? I'm a little tired. Why are you tired? I'm uh, crazy, crazy hill. Crazy hill? Yeah. You know where, where's the final part of this hill is going to? Hopefully down there, but I think it's up there. Where? Where, where up there? The top. There? Yeah. No, we're going all the way over there, sir. Oh. It's okay. Eat. <laughs> 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 Like it's all safe from water here, especially in this rain. Well, after the rain, any words of wisdom, put Liliana and Victor? Good luck. I'm not bring ready. some water and bring, and bring your inhaler. I'm not ready. This is Carlos Mendoza reporting for KCTH Chabot College News. Make sure you check out Mission Peak over the summer. Thanks, Carlos. Coldplay has sent a touching message to an autistic boy seen sobbing at their concert in a video which has grasped the heart of the internet. The father of the young boy, Luis Vasquez, captured this moment of his young son breaking down in tears. This was live from Coldplay's performance in Mexico City, and the video has amassed over 1.8 million views. The Footage shows Coldplay playing Fix You, in which Vasquez and his son both became emotional. The heartwarming video was heavily supported by fans everywhere, which didn't take long for Coldplay to post on their website. This kind of thing makes it all worthwhile. Hola Luis y tu hijo hermosa. Hermoso. <laughs> Love. The proud father also addressed the subject of autism on the YouTube by post by saying, there's still a chance for having a better place for them. Hashtag Autism Speak. Now, with the latest insights on ent entertainment, here's Mario. Thanks, Angelina. Well, it's been a sad week for music fans all around the world because this past Thursday, legendary pop icon Prince has passed away. Prince's death came as a total shock to everyone. The seven-time Grammy Award winner had recently had been on tour and even attended a Golden State Warriors game here in the Bay Area a couple of weeks ago. Tributes have been held across the globe honoring Prince's remarkable and innovative career, over the last 10 years, great artists such as James Brown, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, and most recently, David Bowie have died. And Prince was looked at as being one of the true great performers alive. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case. Rest in peace, Prince. Apparently, Drake will be putting out in some work, work, work this summer. Drake's long-anticipated Views from the Six is set to drop in a few days, and last night, the Toronto Raptor shared the album cover art along via Twitter with a new set of tour dates, co-presented by Apple Music. This Summer 16 tour will feature Drake's What A Time To Be Alive collaborator, Future, along with OVO signees Roy Woods and DVSN. Tickets go on sale to the general public on Friday, April 29th, the same day Views is scheduled for release. Check out all the tour dates online. Well, that's all we have for the entertainment update. Back to you, Angelina. 
Thanks, Mario. Prince was indubitably one of the best in the business. A flurry of extreme weather in the Los An Angeles area managed to topple a giant chicken bucket from the top of a local Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant. Strong winds from a thunderstorm on Monday sent the massive bucket crashing into the ground near the drive through of the Long Beach KFC location. No one was injured in the incident, but some witness did notice that the giant bucket did not contain any chicken. Now, with the latest in the realm of sports, here's Victor. Thanks, Angelina. Some unfortunate news recently arose regarding Golden State Warriors guard Stephen Curry after returning to action last Sunday against the Houston Rockets. Curry slipped awkwardly and injured his knee. The reigning NBA's most valuable player came back from ankle injury for Game 4 of his team's first round series against the Rockets. Then, right before the first half ended, Curry reportedly suffered a grade 1 MCL sprain, which sidelined him for at least the next two weeks. Following his MRI, Curry tweeted, Thanks for all the prayers and messages. Can feel all the positive energy. God is great. All things considered, I'm going to be I'm going to be all right. Hashtag dumb nation. The Rockets are set to take on the uh, the Warriors are set on, set to take on the Rockets here at Oracle Arena in Oakland tonight uh, for game five and hope to move on to the second round of this year's NBA playoffs. The San Jose Sharks recently moved f uh, past the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Last Friday, the team defeated the Los Angeles Kings with a score of 6-3 and won the series four games to one. Right winger Jonas uh, Donsky scored two goals and uh, the Sharks w for the Sharks, while center Joe Pavelski and Chris Tierney uh, Melk Melker Carlson and left winger Matt Nieto each had one goal. After successfully eliminating the Kings, the Sharks are now waiting for the, for the winner between the Anaheim Ducks and Nashville Predators, who are set to clash tonight for their season, uh, series ending Game 7 in the Honda Center in Anaheim. Well, that's all for our sports scoops for today. Back to you, Angelina. Thanks, Victor. We sure hope Steph Curry makes it back on the court as soon as possible. It's a strange moment that a traffic warden attempted to give a ticket to a man driving nothing less than a giant foot. The bizarre scene was captured in Balham of South London and saw the warden issuing the ticket to the driver of the giant foot, who was seen wearing a silver jumpsuit and crash helmet. It was a promotional stunt by the team behind the Wandsworth Wans Arts Fringe Festival ahead of the event in May, which promises 16 days of music and theatrical entertainment. The Bureau of Silly Ideas group took the foot of a trip around the area and is likely to appear again before the festival begins. However, the foot's arrival caused quite the stir among locals. But if you're thinking that the whole thing seems a little bit too strange to be true, then you'd be right. So before we close things out, here's May with the weather. All right, thank you, Angelina. I'm here with the update on the weather in Hayward. Cloudy out the door this morning. We had a lot of rain earlier around 10 a.m. As for the rest of the day, you can expect a slight storm around 2 o'clock this afternoon. The numbers for the rest of the week are looking a lot better. Starting tomorrow, you don't have to worry about grabbing an umbrella because it will be sunny. In Hayward, the weather will progressively get warmer into the weekend. Tomorrow will top out at 70 degrees, and this Saturday and Sunday will hit 80 degrees. So enjoy the rest of your day, and stay Stay dry. Thank you. Thanks, May. Well, that's it for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash TV. Stay tuned to KCTH 27 on Comcast for more Chabot TV.